And so, Father God, at this time, we commit ourselves into your hands and pray that, Lord, we want to hear your still small voice, the voice of the Spirit of God speaking into our heart and help us to discern to the voice of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, we commit ourselves this time into your hands. Help us to seriously focus on the Word of God. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, uh, we are going to focus on the power of God's Word. See, in the Word of God, there is great power of God contained in the Word of God. And our key verse today is verse 4, 2 Peter 1, 4. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. By what we have been given the great and precious promises. We have been given great and precious promises through the word of God. Through the word of God, we have been given great and precious promises. For what reason? That through this, that is through the word of God, you may be the partakers of the divine nature. You need to grow in the divine nature. It's very important that through the word of God, through the reading of God's word, through understanding God's word, through obeying God's word, living your lives according to the word of God, you keep growing into the divine nature. You see, the verse 3 over says, 2 Peter 1, 3, through his divine power, Lord Jesus has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness. That pertain to life and godliness. We have to grow in our divine nature. Right now, while living on this earth, we have a physical nature. But that physical nature has to be transformed day by day, hour by hour, by obeying God's word, learning God's word, reading God's word, we have to transform into a godly nature. Why? Because one day you aspire and desire to go to heaven and to dwell with God. You cannot dwell with God in your physical nature. You need to transform into the divine nature of God in order to, in order to dwell in a divine place where God dwells. And so it is very important. And another thing that the word of God has the power to produce the divine nature within you. When the scientists, they, with the electronic, electron, they call it electron microscope. With the electron microscope, when they look at the atom, they found out that within the atom, there is a nucleus. And in the nucleus, there are protons. Protons carry positive charge. And when they have the same charge, they cannot stay together. They will repay each other. They will fly out of the nucleus. But in spite of that, they still stay together in the nucleus within the atom. And they are puzzled why does this happen? And they said there is a mysterious powerful force that keeps that protons together. They also call it as a strong force. My dear friends, that mysterious powerful force is the powerful force of the creative word of God. When God created the heavens and the earth and the universe, he spoke a word. And in the word of God, there is great power. That great power is still active and working and keeping 
the protons inside the nucleus of the atom together. The Bible says it in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory? Jesus is the brightness of the glory of God and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. See, he upholds everything by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Upholding. What does it mean upholding? Sustaining, right? Maintaining. The Lord sustains and maintains by the power of his spoken word. Yes, he spoke his word by which God created the universe. And things because of that do not disintegrate and do not fall apart. You see. Because of the mighty power of God's word. But it is going to happen one day. You see. That is what Bible says. But anyway, let us read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Hebrews 11, verse 3. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The word was framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. The things that are visible today to our natural eyes were not in existence before. It came into existence. I'll see all the chemical elements of the chemistry came into existence when God spoke the word and created the whole universe. And so that is how the worlds were framed by the word of God. And it is the power of God's word that keeps the protons together in the nucleus of the atom. But as soon as God removes his power, if God removes his power, what will happen? It will be a big atomic explosion and things will dissolve. Second Peter chapter 3 verses 11 and 12. This will happen in the last days. We have already arrived in the last days. We are living in the last days when things are falling apart. You see. God will one day remove his power that is holding everything together. We read here, therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, see, all these things will be dissolved, what manner of, per what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness looking for, verse 12, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God. See, the day of the Lord is coming soon. That is the last day when Jesus is coming soon. Because of which the heavens will be dissolved. That's what the Bible says. Being on fire and the elements will melt with fervent heat. We are in these last days. When God is removing, he is withholding power slowly, slowly actually. Because people have sinned so greatly. And these are the last days. According to God's word, God is withhold, taking away his withholding power. A day will come even when the heavens will dissolve. The skies will go away. The earth will be baptized in fire. And the elements will melt away with trouble here. 
We are living in the days of COVID-19, you see. Things are falling apart, you see. It's beyond control of the human governments. Human governments, even after, see how many months have passed by, they have not still found a single medicine to heal this disease. And my dear friends, the only thing that you can depend on is the word of God. You see, depend on God's word. Read God's word. Even when you are at home, don't just waste away your time in other things. Draw closer to God. Read the Bible. Don't spend your time only watching television and internet. Go to the Word of God, the Bible. Read certain portions of the Bible and understand the Word of God. And your life will become more and more in divine nature. You will start putting on the divine nature of God. And you will start winning victory over your physical nature. Because a day is coming when the Lord is going to take away his bride, the church and the believers to heaven. You got to be ready with being clothed, having put on the divine nature of God. Secondly, you see, as we read the word of God, you will start putting on the divine nature of God. Let me illustrate. See, back in India, when it is summer season, then there are many, many mango trees, you see. And on these mango trees, the mangoes grow and ripe and they fall. And the farmers in India, they have big farms and a lot of mango trees in their farms. And even they keep the cows, you see, in the villages. So they don't get a supply of milk, but they keep cows by which they get their milk. If they have bigger farms of more cows and buffaloes, then they send the milk to the sea. But what happens is, in the summer season, when there are so many mango trees and mangoes are falling from the trees and the uh, the cows, they eat grass actually. But they also love to eat mangoes that have fallen from the mango trees. And when they eat the, those mangoes falling from the mango trees, and if you get the milk from that cow, the milk is mango flavored, you see. If the cow eats only grass, then the milk is not mango flavored. But the milk becomes mango flavored milk during this season. There is a statement, you are what you eat. You will become like what you eat. If you eat the word of God, then you put on the divine nature of God. He becomes godly. He becomes Holy Spirit filled. The anointing of God begins to increase upon you. You've got to devour and eat the word of God. Maybe all these days, we do not know, maybe the government started keeping you shut in your homes. It's your time to read the word of God. Because one day you will regret that I did not spend that time reading God's word and putting on that divine nature. And so, you become like what you eat. And that's why our key verse once again says, 2 Peter 1.4 By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. That is through the word of God you have been given great and precious promises. That through this you may be the partakers of the Divine nature. The word of God has power to put upon you the divine nature of God. You need to grow in the divine nature of God and become more and more like Jesus.
Be transformed more and more. Like Jesus. So that when you go to heaven. You won't be unprepared. You see. In 1945. When the American troops. Uh, were in. Okinawa. That is near Japan. Okinawa. And. Uh, they came across. A small village. Simbaku. In Simbaku. When they went, they were surprised. Because some 30 years ago, in this small village, a missionary had come, was going towards the mainland Japan. He had stopped there in that small village. And in that small village, he preached the gospel and had made two converts. Two people got saved. And so he taught them some hymns, and gave them Japanese Bibles. And those two people spread the word of God in their small village. The whole village became Christian. The only thing that they taught in their schools was the Bible. And their only legal code was the Ten Commandments. And their social guide was the Beatitudes of Jesus preached in the Sermon on the Mount. And the result was, in that village there was no need of a jail, no crimes. There was no brothel, and there was no drunkenness, and there were no divorce. People were living happy life because of the word of God. And the American troops were so amazed Seeing all these things. And that's why the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. What does the Bible say? Desire pure milk of God's word. We need to grow in that desire spiritual desire that we are hungry for God's word that we can grow in the divine and the spiritual nature of God. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Romans 10 17. So then faith comes by hearing. You will grow in your faith. Spiritual faith. Faith on God. Faith that comes through the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, you, in order to hear the word of God, you see two times the Bible uses hearing, hearing in this Bible verse. You got to read the word of God loudly. Read it loudly so that your physical ears can hear. When your physical ears can hear, and you allow that word to sink into your heart and mind. Then your spiritual ears of your spirit will begin to listen. See your spiritual ears of your spirit got to listen to the word of God. That's how your spirit will begin to grow spiritually. And your spirit will become strong. The spiritual ears got to hear the word of God. So that's why two hearings, the physical ear and the ears of your spirit got to hear the word of God. And that's how you grow spiritually. And in Matthew eleven fifteen, Jesus said, Matthew eleven fifteen, he who has ears to hear, these are the words of Jesus. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Again, he used two hearings. He who has ears to hear the word of God through the physical ear, then let him hear in his spirit. Let him hear in his spirit. So, you need to be really, really desirous 
hungry and thirsty for your spirit to listen to the word of God. Unless you have that hunger in your spirit, your spirit has to be trained to be hungry and thirsty for the word of God. Then only you will read the word of God. You will put aside the television and other things. You know, in my home, I, we never keep cable. You see, never, no television cable. Because we hardly have time to go to the TV. Only in the evening we hear the news that comes by air. See? Otherwise, most of the time the TV is not working. Because we have more time to read God's word and to listen to the spiritual music and spend time with him. Thirdly, when you have the word of God inside you, what it will start doing? Psalm 107, 19 and 20. Psalm 107, 19 and 20. The God's word has a power to heal you. You see, the word of God has a power, as I said in the beginning. It has a power to give you a divine nature. It has a power to open your spiritual ears, your spiritual eyes. It has a power to heal you. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them out of their distresses. People are panicking. People are discouraged. People are depressed. God can save you from that. Verse 20. He sent his word. And heal them. How did God? How did God heal people? By sending His word. The word of God has the power to heal you from everything and deliver them from their destructions and deliver them even from the things that can destroy your life. God can deliver you from all the deadly diseases. And accidents and things like that. We read an illustration in Matthew 8, 5 to 13. Jesus heals a centurion's servant. You see, God heals through Jesus, the servant of a centurion. The centurion came to Jesus. He's a Roman guy, see, he's not a Jew. And this centurion comes to Jesus and says, can you come and heal my servant who is very sick at home? And Jesus said, okay, I'll come to your house and I'll heal your servant. But then the, this Gentile man realized that Jesus is very holy. Not only that, he's God himself walking in the human body on this earth. He had come to know that. The Jews had not come to know that. You see, they could not grasp that. But this Roman guy, he realized that Jesus, the man called Jesus, is not an ordinary person. He is God himself in the human body walking on this earth. And then he said, see Jesus, I'm unworthy. I'm unworthy for you to come under my roof. But if you can only speak a word, just speak a word and my servant will be healed. My dear friends, the word of God is alive. You see this word in this Bible, it has life. You, want to be, you don't realize it. There is too much life of God in this world. There is too much power of God in this world. The word of God is full of life. The man had realized it. He said, you just speak a word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus spoke the word. Even Jesus was so amazed at this man's faith and he spoke the word and the servant was healed at that very moment in the house in that centurion's home. 
And so my dear friends, if you need light, read God's word. There is the healing life of God, spiritual life of God. Read God's word and obey God's word. You will get life. You will get power. You will get the healing touch of God just by reading God's word and obeying it. Secondly, the word of God has the power to fight your enemy. Remember that. The word of God has power to fight your enemy. Ephesians 6, 17. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Here the armor, the spiritual armor of God is given. And in verse 17 says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. You see the word of God is like a sword. It will protect you from your enemy. It will protect you from the deadly diseases and the infections that crawl and move so swiftly on the face of this earth. The word of God will protect you. It has a power to fight your enemy. You know, these days, behind this disease of COVID-19, there are demons. There are killer demons. And Satan is using this opportunity to kill so many people and break them into hell. But my dear friends, you know that this COVID-19 is not only a physical thing. There are spiritually demonic spirits behind it. The devil is behind it. Diseases are not only physical, they are spiritual too. You know, in all the big hospitals in the United States, there is a department called pastoral care department. Why there is a pastoral care department in the large hospitals in the United States? And there are pastors in it, chaplains in it. Because the diseases also harm people spiritually. There are spiritual entities, evil entities behind diseases. And you know, that's the reason there is a pastoral care department in large hospitals there are. And the Bible says in Matthew 18, Matthew 8, Matthew 8, verse 16, let me read. Matthew 8, verse 16, Bible proves that when evening had come, they brought to him, that is, they brought to Jesus, many who were demon possessed. And he cast out the spirits, that he cast out the evil spirits with the word. How did he cast it out? With the word, the word of God is the sword of the Holy Ghost to protect you from the evil spirits and their attacks. He cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick. See, Jesus connected these two things together. Casting out the evil spirits by his word and healing all who were sick. And so my dear friends, the word of God has a healing power in it. You got to read God's word. It has a healing power and to defeat the enemy, the Satan, and the evil spirits, and to heal you. Even when we read in 2 Kings 5, 1 to 14, 2 Kings 5, 1 to 14, we come across a man called Naaman. You know the story of Naaman, right? Naaman was a Gentile. He was not of Israel. He was not Jewish. 
but he had captured one Jewish girl and taken it with him during the war time. And this Jewish girl in his home was his slave. And this Naaman had leprosy all over his body. And he was suffering from leprosy. So one day, this slave woman, she gathered some courage and said to Naaman's wife that my master can be healed of this disease. He just has to go to Israel, meet the prophet over there, the prophet called Elijah, and uh, I think it is prophet Elisha, and he has to meet the prophet, and the prophet will give him whatever it needs to be healed. So Naaman, he climbed his war horse and with chariots and with so many gifts and soldiers, he went to Israel and he went, the king of Israel was afraid, but he said, no, I just came to meet the prophet. So the king of Israel gave him the directions where to find the prophet and his house. So he came and stood at the house of the prophet. This prophet walked under heavy anointing, in fact, double portion of the Holy Ghost. He even did not come out of his house, that's what Bible says. He just sent his servant, Gazi, and said, tell him, tell Naaman, I don't want your gifts. You just go to the Jordan River, deep yourself seven times and you will be healed. So the fellow went to the Jordan River and saw that the Jordan River was a muddy water. And he did not want to deep himself seven times in that. And he was grumbling and saying that, I'm, I thought the man will come out of his house, he will wave his hands over me and he will pray something and I'll get healed. That's not how God works, you see. God has his own way of doing things. The man even didn't come out of his home. I'm going back to my own country and I'll dip myself in my rivers. Then his servants and the soldiers came to him and said, Master, the prophet gave you instructions. Are they very heavy to obey them? They are not so. They are easy ones. Why don't you obey and just go and dip yourself in the Jordan River? They talked some sense into his head. Finally, the guy obeyed and went to the Jordan River. And he dipped him himself seven times. And the Bible declares, on the seventh time when he came back, he had no leprosy. He was healed. My dear friends, the word of God has the power to heal you. Read God's word. Read it more. Obey it. And the Lord will heal you. The word of God has a power of salvation. Very powerful is the word of God. Be the words of God's word. Not only hearers. That is what Bible says. This is the last verse I'll read and close. James chapter 1, verses 23 to 25. James 1, 23 to 25. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer. See, if you do not become the doer of God's word, it's not going to help you. You have to become the doer of God's word. Not only hearer. If anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this one will be blessed. You become blessed by God's word, healed by God's word, saved by God's word, provided by God's word, 
protected by God's word only by doing the word of God. This one will be blessed in what he does. He will be blessed in what he does. You know, there was an evangelist. His name was Stephen Grellet. Stephen Grellet was impressed by the Holy Spirit to go and preach the gospel at the American lumber camp. He was impressed by the Holy Spirit go and preach in the American lumber camp. And so the evangelist obeyed and he went to the American lumber camp. When he went there, what happened was he cannot see a single person over there. The people that were working in those lumber yards and were cutting trees from that forest had moved on into deeper jungles. And so he thought, what am I going to do here? Again, the Holy Spirit impressed on him. You better preach the word of God here. And so the evangelist obeyed the Holy Spirit and began preaching God's word powerfully to that empty space and the trees over there. And he preached God's word and he left. After a few years, he was not knowing what was the result of his preaching. But he met a man. A man ran after him and caught hold of him and said, Mr. Stephen, in such a such year, you had come to that American lumber camp. The place was empty. You preached. He said, yes. I did preach because the Holy Spirit was impressing upon me, pressurizing me. Go and preach. But he said, it was all empty. There was no one. This fellow said, I come back to get a saw that was left out in that place. And when I came back to get that saw that was left out in that place, I saw a man preaching. And I stopped to hear him. Maybe you did not see me. But I was convicted by the preaching of God's word that day. I repented of my sins. I gave my life to Jesus. I got hold of a Bible for myself. And that Bible has transformed my mind. Thank you for being faithful and preaching God's word. My dear friends, the word of God has a power to transform your life, to transform your situations, to transform your conditions and circumstances. Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that your word contains too much power. Pray in your heart right now. Lord, I want to read more and more of your word. I want to be transformed more and more into the divine nature of God because the Bible and his word and its word transforms me and makes me to grow into a godly nature. Lord, help me to grow in my divine nature. If you aspire or desire to go to heaven after your life on this earth, this is the time God has given you to grow in your divine nature. In fact, we are in the last days. Lord Jesus is going to come soon. Don't waste time in the worldly things. Spend time in growing in your divine nature. Reading God's word and doing God's work.
our loving Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that there is mighty power of God in the Word of God to heal us, to save us, to defeat our enemies, to defeat Satan and his forces of darkness, and to transform me into the very nature of God. And so help me, Lord, to understand the value of God's word and the preciousness and the riches of God's word. Help us to be obedient and become the doers of God's word. Bless your people, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.